Good morning, and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am not your regular host, Krista Burns. She is somewhere in an airplane at the moment on her way to some training in New Orleans. I am Michael Sowers. I am the Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is our weekly online webinar that uh, provides uh, learning topics and presentations of interest to Nebraska librarians and anybody else who is uh, welcome to attend. Uh, this runs every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Time for about an hour. Uh, we have plenty of topics coming up and a very interesting topic here today. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to say that at any point, if you have any questions, if you do have a microphone, the, uh, you can you go ahead and raise your hand in the GoToWebinar interface, and I will happily turn your microphone on for you. If you don't or, or just don't want to do that, uh, there is a questions area in GoToWebinar. Just go ahead and type in your questions and I will relay them to our presenters. I'll be keeping track of that and dealing with any issues that may arise as they come along. And we are recording this session, so as always, you're more than welcome to listen to this again or if you're joining us as by listening to the recording, uh, welcome. This morning, we have uh, Joyce and Nora from the University of Nebraska Omaha Chris Library. And they're here to talk about some uh, community programs and partnerships that they're uh, doing here. Uh, and uh, Joyce, Nora, Nora, are you there? Yes, we're we here. are. We're here. Uh, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and just let you go. Thank okay. you. Um, I am Joyce New here. I'm director of patron services here at Chris Library, and my co-partner is Nora Hillier. I'm a reference librarian here at Chris. Um, we're going to talk to you about our community engagement project that we have set up with Girls Inc. here in Omaha. And um, Joyce and I were very interested in doing something in service learning or community engagement. We saw that there was a strong service learning movement here on campus, but because we don't have any credit courses as librarians, we really couldn't do a service learning course. So we talked with the service learning coordinator and decided to do something in community engagement. And he introduced us to the directors at Girls Inc. So what we did is we talked with um, the directors at Girls Inc. and asked them what do they need, what are they lacking, and here is our expertise, here is how we can help you. And as a result of that, we set up a three-year partnership with them to try to develop a library for their girls to use. Um, we wanted this library to be more usable than what they have had in the past. Right now, the girls can't check out the books. Um, it's really just a room full of books, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of unorganized. And we wanted to um, help them develop that. Nora, if I could interrupt for, for just a moment. Um, we're getting some sort of like tapping or vibrating coming through. I don't know if that's something uh, going on on your end. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are, well, you, are you still hearing it? Uh, not at the moment, it's intermittent, but I just wanted to check. Uh, it might be a technical issue. Uh, well, let's just go ahead and proceed. Okay, okay. Just a little bit about Girls Inc. They are located in North Omaha and South Omaha. The school picture at the top right is their North Omaha campus. It's a converted school, elementary school, and the Bottom picture is a church that they've converted into um, <clears throat> a space for girls. You can see the different age groups, um, mainly five to eight, the different ethnic groups that are supported, and um, they serve over 800 girls each year. They have after school programs in the summer. They have girls all day, every day, Monday to Friday. 
and um, they serve them lunches and dinners and uh, get, uh, do different types of programming for them. So one of our projects, actually Joyce and I, we consider ourselves like project managers and we are like the go-betweens between Girls Inc and different education classes that can set up service learning situations for the UNO students. And what we did in the past is partnered with a library science collection class. And they came in, this was um, April of this year, and we went to the South Omaha campus of Girls Inc. and uh, worked on their library there. The class developed a community analysis of what the Girls Inc. organization is about and who they serve, and they did an evaluation of the current collection, and then they built a list of new recommended resources. Um, the girls in the, or actually the students at the UNO class, studied what the community needed. They first theorized that it was mainly Hispanic students, but they realized that there's a large population of Sudanese students who use the Girls Inc. facility. And so that kind of changed their community analysis and what they needed for the library. So from this um, analysis, <clears throat> the UNO students were able to um, learn about the theory of uh, library science and how to apply it, and then they actually applied it to that particular community, and uh, that helped them gain a sense of responsibility. And in the meantime, the Girls, Inc. Uh, facility in the South Omaha were able to we were able to um, weed their collection and build a usable library there for them. And then the UNO faculty saw uh, an increased motivation in the students in that um, applying this theory gave them some uh, good experience and the students were uh, highly motivated to help out this group of Girls Inc. students. Um, for instance, in the library itself, they had three or four sets of an encyclopedia. <clears throat> and so, oh, excuse me, um, probably one or, you know, probably three of those sets were not usable. And also, the class noticed that there were several shelves that it looked like the books were never touched. And so um, in evaluating the library and what was needed, they were able to weed out the books that were not touched, weed out several sets of encyclopedias, and uh, use those items. Those items were then donated to the community. Here's a picture. We have done this twice now, where we have gone into the libraries First time in North Omaha, and this is the North Omaha site, where we have um, gone in, weeded the library, cleaned it up, and rearranged it. And this is the before pictures of the North Omaha campus. You can see that there's books kind of scattered everywhere. It looks a little unorganized, and it would be probably very overwhelming for maybe someone who was six or seven years old to come in and try to find a book. It was very difficult to find anything at all. Here's another set of pictures. This is from North Omaha. We did this in March of 2010. This class came in. They looked at every book, took a book off of every shelf one at a time, looked it over, and decided if they were going to keep it, put it back on the shelf, or read it. Uh, it ended up we had about 76 books, or I'm sorry, 76 boxes of books that we had uh, weeded out of here. And then here is North Omaha campus when it's cleaned up. And we were able to um, open up some shelf space 
We organized a lot of books by author and age group and series. We were able, the picture on the bottom right, that is the reference area. We were able to put books by, um, for instance, history, uh, country, languages, things like that. You can see we still kept three sets of encyclopedias there. This is the South Omaha campus, pictures of, be of before. You can see in the bottom left, there's Melissa Cass, the librarian here. She was the instructor for that particular class, and she's uh, trying to decide how to put the books back. This was a, a lot smaller space than the North Omaha campus. There's a uh, fewer girls there, but um, it's still important that we would get this organized. Here are, is the class. Um, again, they took every book out, examined every book, decided what to keep, decided what to weed, and this is the pictures of the girls doing that work. And then here is the finished product. They were able to put books on the bottom shelf for young kids to get to. Um, I, I believe we kept one set of encyclopedias out of all of this and they were able to organize by uh, genre or age or series here again. Uh, in addition to the library science classes for the collection development, we also partnered with the young adult services class this summer. And we went to Girls Inc. North and um, brought, we had books that we were able to give them ahead of time. So you can see we had four different books, 48 girls. This was over a period of two weeks, and we had 16 pizzas and 12 dozen cookies, and a very enjoyable time for all of us, both um, the girls at Girls Inc., the, um, the students in the library science class. Nora and I were there along with the instructors from the library science class. And we also invited the uh, area public librarians to come and talk to Girls Inc. about the programming that they have in the public library. Um, so the students in the library science class had to uh, obviously read the books also, but then develop a set of questions, um, or a plan how they would get the girls talking if they weren't talking. Uh, and after doing that, then they were able to apply that in a real-life situation. The outcomes from our book club, again, the students, the UNO students, gain real-life experience, and that's something that Nora and I have been really um, anxious to see happen and also to keep going. Um, and talking to the instructors, that's been part of the big benefit that you learn these things in class, and it seems like it should go that way, but you never really know until you get there. It's kind of like teaching. You can practice all you want, but once you get in front of the class and you have to start teaching, that's when you find out what really will work and what won't. So being able to give um, the library science students this opportunity now has been very, uh, very beneficial. Another one of the outcomes from the uh, book club we experienced were the students that had never really ventured into North Omaha and were somewhat leery found out there really was nothing that they needed to be afraid of and really enjoyed the engagement that happened between them and the girls. So some of the assumptions that they had about North Omaha were challenged and they came away with and realizing that um, not all of their presumptions were true. Um, the Girls Inc. members, besides having this interaction with the UNO students, also learned about their public library and about um, the resources and programming that happened at their local library. As a result of this, after we went through our book club, 20 20-some girls from the Girls Inc. campus 
did go to the public libraries. They have library cards and they participated in the programming in the public library. So we felt really good about that too. And we're hopeful that the participants that we were with this year will be the role models for this coming summer. And here's a picture of the group, one of the groups we were with. This is the older group, um, the Girls Inc. members, library science students, and Nora's in there. And you may recognize Dr. Becky Pasco was there too. This was her class. Everyone's smiling, and we really did have a, a really good discussion. We didn't always stay on topic with the book that we chose, um, but the girls enjoyed sharing some of the books that they had read. We've also been able to put, uh, put good books in the girls' hand in a variety of ways. Melissa Cast has a scholastic book fair here at UNO every spring and every fall. Part of the reason for that is the, uh, the number of books that are sold, then our library also gets some new books. And each time she also has a nonprofit organization that people can donate books to. So we've been able to um, get oh, around 20 books maybe each time um, for each campus. So Girls Inc. North received 20 new books and the South received 20 new books from this book fair. Um, Dr. Pasco got a grant from the Service Learning Academy and uh, was also able to contribute some more titles. The Library Science Collection Development classes were, after they um, we weeded those collections, they were to pick two books that they uh, took back to class and discuss why they weeded those. And then they were also uh, had to pick two books to replace those. With the grant money, uh, Dr. Pasco purchased those choices from the students, and we put those back in the library. And uh, the book club girls this summer were each able to choose one book of their, of their liking, um, and we bought one book for each of them, and they were pretty excited about that. We uh, had the public librarians show them on computers how to search for books um, that they might like in the Omaha Public Library. So if you liked reading uh, Twilight, here are some more books that you might like. And that's how they were able to uh, choose new books that they wanted to read. So uh, along with the community engagement and the the theory and thinking behind it, it is not just a one-time, uh, we're going to plant flowers for you in the need. We are real, are dedicated to making this sustainable. It's not just come in, swoop in, leave you alone, and never see you again. We don't want to do that at all. So um, part of the our project involves as many library science classes as we can, and to keep the agreement with Girls Inc., we really have a sort of a real-life laboratory of building a library from the ground up. They just have a building. Um, they have books, but again, as we talked about, they weren't exactly the right kind for that community. So um, sustaining our engagement with them is really important. Part of that is the pursuit of our, uh, Nora and I have been writing grants, and we haven't been successful yet, but never say die, <laughs> so we will continue to uh, look for funding, and for part of that, uh, funding is for new furniture in both of the libraries, it's a real circulation desk, um, and we identified the Nebraska Cornhusker State Industries at the Correctional Services to purchase that furniture from. We also would like to get them an automated library system so they really can uh, they can check out the material and we can barcode them and function like a real library. So some of the ideas, if you're interested in doing this for yourself, we're always happy to talk to anyone. Feel free to give us a call and at the last slide we'll have our email. Um, but it really starts with a big picture vision and 
not everyone listening, maybe not very many, are in an academic library, but public libraries can do this too, special libraries, school libraries. I think any, anybody is uh, able to do some community engagement. But you do need to uh, have that big picture in your mind and then start tying the pieces together. Um, for us, it was the desire to engage our library science students with real life applications and to also demonstrate to the wider community, not just Omaha, but also nationally, uh, that libraries can be part of the community engagement. So if, um, if a company in your metropolitan area or your, or your town is looking for a partner or needs some kind of information, a library is an ideal partner to do that. Uh, we're all thinking about how to make ourselves viable and make sure that libraries are kept in everyone's future. So partnering with the wider community is a means of doing that. It's important if you're going to do this that you know you have to be very perseverance. <laughs> it's, it takes a lot of patience and you get shot down, but you keep going. You have to go out and look for them, for your partners, and they do not come to you. It's rare if that happens. It's not impossible, but uh, you're the one that needs to go out and start looking. Take some, uh, uh, you have to get out of your, maybe you're used to sitting in the desk or staying within the four walls and you have to get outside of that and go into the community. Um, pay attention to the news. What's going on in your community? Can you see a place that your um, services might be needed? And, and I think this last bullet point under the multiple partners where uh, the every group has an information need whether they realize it or not, I think that's really true. And if you stop to think about you can go down your street and look at the businesses and think about what kind of information need they probably have. They may not even know they need it, but in talking with them, it's, uh, you'll find out that, they're, that they do have a need that you might be able to match. Um, it's really, we've talked about that's really sort of a reference interview in a different setting. So oftentimes if you're doing some reference, people come to the desk and they don't really know the question they need to ask yet. So through talking with them and conversing, you learn and help guide uh, them to what, they, what they're looking for. So this is a this is an outside picture of that. Um, and that's, that's pretty much, I think, what, we've, uh, what we have to say and give you a chance to um, ask some questions. Great, thank you. Um, I'd like to remind everybody listening in live that you're welcome to either raise your hand if you'd like to ask a question uh, via your microphone, and I will happily turn that on for you, or um, you can type that into the questions area of GoToWebinar, and I'll happily pass those questions along. Um, I, I don't have any that are in right now from the audience, but you know, as I was listening, I of course came up with a couple because you know me, I always have questions for people. Yes, you do. Um, yeah. <laughs> Joyce, please be well. I um, do know you. <laughs> <laughs> um, you. You touched upon this very briefly at the beginning, but I'd be interested in hearing a little more in how you found Girls, Inc., and what, what was kind of the process in getting this all set up with them? What what was involved in that? What what needed to be done to just make this happen with them? It, and that's probably where the patients came in at the most. It took us over a year year and a half to really get going wow. with Girls Inc. So it started it uh, it started with uh, Paul Sather is the director of service learning here on campus that we both knew and had heard him talk about service learning classes which is a completely it, it's its own um, pedagogy it has all of these um, requirements for classes to go through to really do service learning and the point behind all of that is you give students at UNO real life experiences. You partner with nonprofits. So you're actually you, you are providing a service that these other the nonprofits would not be able to purchase at all. They don't have the funding. 
So there's benefits among all of the players, shall we call it, the faculty, the staff, the nonprofits, and it really is a semester-long, intensely involved um, learning process. And at the end of a service learning class, there's a piece of reflection that all of the UNO students write, and it's really a research paper. That was not a possibility for Nora and I to do because we do not have a standalone class. So we started looking at what could we do. And I talked with uh, Paul Sather, and we talked about community engagement, which is, I guess you could call it service learning light, um, very light, because it's more just an engagement. It's not the intense one-on-one uh, -on -one that you usually get in the service learning. So we talked with Paul, who has a, a mind that's able to keep all these nonprofits that he's talked to. He's really done a lot of the networking. He gave me a list of possible uh, partners. UNO, we're very fortunate that UNO has uh, the administration that supports ideas like this. They have a dinner every spring where they invite all the nonprofits from Omaha into a big room and then everyone from the UNO campus come and that's where you can network and that's where you can start talking about here's what we can do, what do you need, will this work? And, and, and it's kind of fun to be in, in all of that um, discussion. For Nora and I, Paul gave us a list. We started looking through, okay, maybe we could do this, maybe we could do this. We did go to the Douglas County Corrections Facility. Uh, they have a program where the inmates read a book and record it, and then that book and recording is sent home to their children while they're still incarcerated. Nora and I went through that training with the hopes that this might be a way that we could get um, library science students involved also, but ultimately realized that really it wasn't a practical means for the students to go through the training. Then you have to go through um, pat down going to the jail wasn't a good fit, so that took some time. However, we were able to donate some books for that program. And so then we went to Girls Inc. and started talking to their program manager. And she said, well, yes, we do have a library. And then that's when we really could start going. And that's kind of a long and involved <laughs> explanation, but maybe gives you an idea. It does take a lot of time, and you may be tempted to say it's not worth it but I would encourage you to, to keep trying. Oh, that was wonderful. In fact, I already, I've got two other mm -hmm. ideas of things you just mentioned <laughs> to, 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 to okay. think Good. about and talk to Good. me. That, that Department of Corrections program sounded really interesting. And that kind of answered one of my other mm -hmm. questions, which was, did you investigate any programs that you decided weren't going to work? Um, and mm -hmm. I, that that would be, I guess, a good example. I, I, um, that's, that's always a... Um, kind of different sort of librarianship, which not everybody right. uh, uh, can do. <laughs> so Right, right. We, we have ideas for um, other community engagement projects. We are talking with the gerontology professor here at UNO, and she heard about our program with Girls, Inc., and she thought we could apply that to um, older adults, possibly set up an, a library in uh, assisted living or a nursing home situation. Uh, so we're going to be talking with her in the future. And then also we were approached uh, here on campus by uh, someone who suggested that we do this for boys also. Well, there is no Boys Inc. in Omaha, but there is a Girls and Boys Club. And we we're going to investigate that also to see if we can set up a library or set up something where we can get books into children's hands. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. I'm, I'm suddenly also having flashbacks to, um, I, caught a t I taught a couple of semesters at the, uh, the uh, University of Denver program uh, several years ago. And this, this experiential learning, I'm remembering that in a knowledge management class I taught, their big project was to actually go find an organization, a business, whether it was where they worked or someone else, and actually talk to them and interview them and work with them and try to come up with a plan. And I think, 
as good as all the theory and the classroom work is, getting mm -hmm. out and actually working with a real live organization, mm -hmm. I think it's probably going to have you, you're going to learn way more out of that than anything else. Right. 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 And, and I, I would add, you don't, you wouldn't have to, because not everyone has the opportunity that Nora and I do. We're lucky that we have the library science program here. And what an ideal uh, partnership that is to be with them and also involve those students. But if you're a public librarian, you don't have those students. They may practicum with you. Um, you can still go out in your community and see what kind of um, resources that maybe the local business is thinking about expanding and or maybe someone's thinking about getting a um, organic grocery store. What is what are the markets like for that in the uh, uh, area? And do the research that we all know how to do. We just don't realize that there are so many people out there that don't have that opportunity, and they also don't know we can do that for them. And, and I think you just uh, reiterated half of the uh, one of the keynotes from NLA conference this year. Right? <laughs> uh, Jamie the Roof uh, from Douglas County was talking about his library and going out into the community and providing those right. resources, not even necessarily with, not not even necessarily having been asked first, but just kind of showing up right. and saying, right. "Hey, we can help." And right. and one of the notes I made was you talking your uh, that that dinner meeting with local uh, nonprofits there, and I'm just thinking, mm -hmm. "Wow, that I mean, you know, That's a good idea. feeding them's great, but even if you don't have the budget, just invite them over and and start mm -hmm. talking to them and say, "Hey, how can we help?" Yeah, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. The, right. If you if you sit around waiting for them to come to you, it will not happen. I agree with that 100%. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, the, the other question I had in, in working with the girls, and if this didn't happen, that, that, that's okay, but did they have, did the girls you were working with have questions for the students and the librarians about kind of librarianship and, and what they're doing? And beyond the book club itself, how was the interaction with the, hey, a bunch of librarians are helping us? What, what is, what's up with that? <laughs> oh, go ahead. Well, I, um, and I'm glad you brought that up because that was another piece of, once you start doing this, it feels like there's all these little pieces that start fitting into this big, puzzle and it really is a partnership and an engagement in a lot of different areas. So they were interested, it was good for them to be around UNO students to talk to them and they now realize we, we would like to bring that book club here on campus. If we can get them here to this campus and they can look around in this library and at least feel comfortable here hopefully they will think about, I can go to college too. And, and so that would be another piece of this. The interaction between uh, UNO students and Girls Inc. Is, is that experiential learning that you can't teach in a classroom. So um, they did ask questions about what it was like to, mm -hmm. to be a student. And the UNO students were good about adding that into the discussion. Um, I don't know that we talked specifically about being librarians, mm -hmm. no. but they did talk about how they like <laughs> reading. <laughs> um, but they also have, they've now had some very positive experiences with not only Nora and I, but the public librarians too. Um, so we, and, and like we said, we're not, it's not a swoop in, swoop out. We have been there, I don't, I've lost track how many times we've been to Girls Inc. now, and we're now becoming familiar faces, at least with some of those girls, and that's a good thing, too. Does that answer your question? Yeah, oh, no, yeah, that's, I, I mean, I was kind of hoping to hear that, you know, you know, three girls said, I want to be a librarian when I grew up, or something, you know, but. Um, no, we, we honestly did not hear that. Okay. <laughs> So we, we did hear, they were interested, and I think this is where some of the um, perceptions of some of the UNO students were challenged. One girl talked about being a physician. She wants to be a pediatric doctor. Another one talked about being a lawyer, where everyone, where some people had the um, impression that these girls are just going to be lucky if they graduate out of high school. These girls have high expectations, and they've set 
schools? Um, yeah, it's really, Girls Inc. is a good program, and we may have one of the premium organizations, but it, it was good for that interaction to happen, too. Great. And they're all going to make more money than the librarians. If they're well, yeah, them. I mean, why, you know, don't, don't, don't want to stop them from doing that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so, I, I, again, I'd like to remind the, the attendees, you know, happy to take questions. I, I haven't seen any others uh, coming through. I, I just kind of have one more, and that's the, and again, you kind of covered this, but uh, ask a little more directly, what, what's next? What, 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 what is the next thing you're going to be doing, either with Girls, Inc., or the next program, or where, where, where is this going? Well, unfortunately, we have not had luck getting money. We've okay. tried several different grant opportunities and we've been turned down. But we have three more ideas of where to get money, possibly through, um, I think it's through ALA. Mm -hmm. I think there's a national program, National Library, um, the museum too. Yeah, MS. Okay. MS, yeah. So we're going to try there. So we're, we still want to get furniture for them, new shelving, new tables, new seating, um, and a, a library system, and one where we can teach them how to use it. And we want to teach them how to use it so they can carry on with it. So that that's our immediate goal, is to still get money. And then um, me personally, um, I want to pursue other community engagement opportunities besides Girls, Inc. And they may be not uh, as involved as what we've done with Girls, Inc., because that really, we signed a three-year memorandum of understanding with them. Uh, um, and, it, and, and it's, I, we're, we're into our third year already. The time has gone fast. But you, it's important to know you don't have to do that. It may be a one-time meeting with somebody or two times. It, whatever involvement you can do, any kind of engagement is good for both. Uh, both the library and for the partners that you're working with. So I wouldn't, I would encourage people to think about, it doesn't have to be big and lofty like this one is, um, and part of why it's so large is because we have the library science classes here. Uh, so even something small is beneficial. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. All right. Well, I I want to say thank you very much. I, 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 this has been very enlightening to me. I had I had no idea you know we're doing this. I, I I don't I guess I don't follow the the, the UNO program probably as much as I should. Um, but uh, and and I was not surprised to see Dr. Pasco in a picture. That that's yeah. she's just she's just <laughs> everywhere. Uh, so <laughs> what would we do without her? Um, exactly. So, I, I, last chance if anybody and if any of our live attendees have any questions, I, I don't see uh, any others coming in on the Q and A, and nobody has raised their hands. So, just as I, I kill a little time here, um, Joyce, Nora, I want to thank you once again uh, f for doing this for us today. It sounds like a, a, an amazing program. Uh, good good luck finding some more funds. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, we'll all. Yeah. You know uh, that that's that's the tough part, really, at this point uh, uh, for, yeah. for, for mm -hmm. just about everybody. Um, yeah. So uh, thanks again, and thanks you all. Thanks to all of you who attended. Um, and this is uh, has been Encompass Live for um, uh, Wednesday, October twenty sixth, two thousand eleven, and uh, this recording will go up shortly, and uh, the the powerpoints will also be made available when the archive goes up. So. Um, Thanks again for listening and attending, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.